supercharging, what it is, and why is there anything called supercharging, and why do you need at all to have a supercharger? Supercharger is a term reserved, so far at least, for fast charging stations belonging to Tesla. Supercharger was Elon Musk's idea to solve the problem the hazard people had with charging their cars when going on a longer trip. The first Tesla supercharger was introduced in United States back in 2012. It was an exclusive group of people that owned Tesla Model S that could use the chargers back then. Now Tesla have more cars and since then also they have expanded their network around the world. Only South America, Africa and Antarctica is continents without superchargers up until today. But the expansion is still in a high rate and new superchargers are opening somewhere in the world every week. Normally when you need to charge something your mobile, for example, it takes time, sometimes very long time. And that goes for an electric car too, especially if you have a large battery, like in a Tesla. Why is it like this? Why can't you just plug and deplug the mobile phone and you will get full charge in a second? Unfortunately, that is just a dream today. Without being too complicated, it's a matter of available energy and the battery's ability to receive power without being destroyed. Therefore, a battery needs time to recharge. But the question comes up now. How long time do we actually need to recharge? If we put more power into the battery, it will go faster, right? That's the whole idea behind the supercharger. Bypassing the car's onboard charger and put high effect of direct current straight into the battery can shorten the time spent charging dramatically. Because even if the batteries can offer a huge range to an EV, it will eventually run out. And then, in many circumstances, it's not practical to have to wait for many hours to continue with your journey. So the supercharger is designed to charge the battery at a fast rate, in a controlled way, because going too fast, today's battery will be damaged. So the goal is to put as much energy as possible in a short time period without hurting the battery. A supercharger can today charge with a peak rate of 250 kilowatts at Tesla's so-called V3 supercharger. But most of the superchargers today is version 2. They charge fast also at a peak rate of 150 kilowatts. At this quite newly built supercharger, Tesla is preparing for more stalls that will be the version 3 standard. The fundament for the electric equipment is even ready, so probably soon this supercharger site will have the version 3 standard. Charging a car so fast, or several cars in the same time with 150 or 250 kilowatts, puts a special requirements on our electric grid. Compare 250,000 watts to a modern LED lamp bulb pulling maybe 8 watts. That's a huge difference. So a supercharger cannot be placed in any location. It needs access to the core of our electric grid. At many superchargers you can see that they have their own transformer. And at our newly built supercharger we can see that it's located close to the electric railway and a switch gear. Those supercharger speeds of 250 or 150 kilowatts promised by the V3 and V2 supercharger is not something that you see in real life. The highest speed my car ever charged with that I saw 
was a little bit over 130 kilowatt on a V2 supercharger. It all depends on several factors. First of all, it depends on how much charge you have in your battery from the beginning when starting supercharging. The lower you have in the uh, your battery, the faster the charger will s ramp up the speed of the charging process. Now we just uh, started the supercharging and we can see here uh, that uh, we get the speed of 118 kilowatt. The more the battery will fill up with energy, the more the charging rate will throttle down. Then it also depends on the temperature of the battery pack. So if the battery pack is cold because the outside temperature is cold, the car will charge slower. But Tesla introduced something they call precondition the battery. That means that if you put the supercharger in your destination in the car, Sometime before arriving to the supercharger, the car will start to precondition the battery in order to put it in the right temperature so the supercharging process will go as quickly as possible. Another thing that can affect your charging speed at a V2 supercharger is if you charge the car on a paired stall with another car. Then the charging speed will be reduced and the time spent getting the energy needed will be longer. See the numbers on the stall? Try not to use the same number as another car when arriving to the supercharging site. But supercharging is free of charge, isn't it? Yeah, in the beginning it was free. But after a while, when more and more people bought Tesla cars, it became a problem. Because even if Tesla had this fair use policy, which meant that you should buy the charger at home or charge at work, on a standard charger and only use the supercharger for long distance drive. People were abusing this, so they were going to the supercharging and was charging anyway, even if they were not going on a long distance trip. So Tesla had to introduce a pay model for newer cars, where they took a certain amount of money per kilowatt hour. That's in most countries of the world. But some areas and parts of the United States, for regulatory reasons, Tesla had to introduce a time-based fee with different tiers depending on how fast the supercharger is charging the car. The price for supercharging varies between countries around the world. I did a comparison between countries that is charging per kilowatt hour. I did a conversion on non-euro currency to euros so we can compare the prices. Interesting is that the cheapest country to supercharge is Norway and the most expensive is Denmark. So the two Scandinavian countries characterize themselves by being one at the top and the other one at the bottom of the list. So is the era of free supercharging over? Well, most likely yes, but there is one way still where you can qualify for some free supercharging and that is through Tesla's referral program. Every Tesla owner gets a referral link that they can hand out to their friends, to their followers on YouTube and so on. And if the friend is using this referral link to buy a Tesla product, then I, as a owner of this referral link gets some free supercharging and the person that has been using this link 
also will get some free supercharging for their brand new car. If you would like to use mine, you are welcome. It's here or it is in the description of this video where you can click the link direct. But when it came more and more Teslas out there, another problem occurred. When the cars was ready supercharging, the owner did not come back in time to remove their car. Maybe they were busy with something else. But that would take up a charging spot for other people that was waiting to charge. Tesla's way of dealing with this problem was to introduce something they call a congestion fee. And that means that if you're charging at a supercharger and your car is ready, they will charge you by minute for the time that you're parking there, not using the charger and taking up a valuable spot for someone else. That applies five minutes after you finish charging if the supercharger site where you're charging is congested with more than 50% of cars charging there. But don't worry, you will get an alert to your mobile through the Tesla app telling you that now it's time to remove the car. And you will also get informed if there is a risk that you will be billed with a congestion fee. But how does it work with payments? There is no card reader on the stall. Everything is administrated through a personal Tesla account connected to the car. Here the credit card details is kept so Tesla can automatically bill the fees connected to different activities around the car. But how do I find the superchargers? Where are they located? You will find them here in the navigator. Here you can see I zoom out and here you see all the superchargers in the Scandinavian area. And uh, also you can um, use the navigator and the navigator will route you through the superchargers that is needed. And if I, for example, want to go here to somewhere in Norway to this place up here, uh, I click this one here and the car will route me to the destination. And as you can see, the car estimates that I need to supercharge twice to go to this place. And uh, the first one is in Arboga, Sweden, where I need to supercharge for 30 minutes. You can also click here on this supercharger and then you can see that uh, uh, what the price are for the supercharger and also the availability of the supercharger. Here you can see that 14 of 14 stalls is available. Supercharger locations are also published on the Tesla website or on any other general site that is publishing charging stations. But why is it two cables on the supercharger stall that you show here? I only saw one cable in many places. Well, it depends on where in the world the supercharger is located. Here in Europe there is two cables on the supercharger and that is because here in Europe the Model 3 is using the so-called CCS standard looking like this. And this one works for Model 3. And for Model S and X they use the legacy Type 2 connection. In America and China all Tesla models uses the same plug, so here you only see one cable on the supercharger. Down under in Australia they have the same system like in Europe with the CCS standard for Model 3. But interesting is that some new V3 superchargers in Europe comes only with the CCS cable. Charging is super easy. Yes, this is Tesla's huge advantage from all other electric car brands. It's so easy to use. The car identify itself at a charger. The paying process is integrated and there is always several stalls at each supercharging site. It 
is a lot of energy needed to supercharge a Tesla. But if we put this in a perspective and compare it to the combustion engine, the amount of energy that is used when driving a combustion engine car is much higher than in an electric car. Because the amount of energy in petrol or diesel is so much higher. But what is worse is that this is only approximately 20 to 30 percent of the energy that you put into a combustion engine. This is actually used for pushing the car forward. The rest is evaporating in heat. So an electric car uses the electricity that is put into their battery in a very efficient way. Well, if you would like to see when I go on a long distance trip and use the supercharger, you can click this link up here. And until next time, have a great life.